What I've seen in the past is that a lot of engineering students tend to have a their grades usually take a hit in the beginning of the engineering journey. And that's for many reasons. Maybe they have to work for too long. Maybe they mismanage their time. They're just getting acclimated and they get shocked in engineering school because of so much work and volume. What's up, engineering fam? Alex is here, here back with another video. Let's answer some questions. The first one we have here is from Diego Castañeda. He says, hello, Alex. The main reason I'm still doubting on switching from computer science to mechanical engineering is that mechanical engineering is in fact interesting to me and more appealing than computer science. However, looking at the mechanical engineering courses I would have to take, it seems like a way more difficult major, not to mention the fewer job opportunities, job growth, especially for international students who already have a barrier and a hard time to get a job after graduation. I would appreciate any input opinion on this as it will really help me out, thanks in advance. Okay, so this is not really a question. It's more like you want me to comment on your thoughts. So that's a little open-ended, but okay, here we go. There's a lot of things that are, there's a lot of details that I think are worth digging a little deeper into in your question. You mentioned the main reason you're doubting on switching from CS to ME. So you're already a computer science major. I'm not sure on which year you are yet. You don't mention that. You say that ME seems interesting to you and more appealing than computer science. So you see, you, you see something in mechanical engineering, but nothing is enough yet. You're, you're, not, you're not saying, yes, I am doing ME. You're just thinking, okay, it's kind of cool. This reminds me actually something that I personally went through when I was in college. I was a mechanical engineering major. I switched from computer science and along my path, I thought that aerospace engineering was cool. Airplanes, jet engines, wings, landing gear. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, like, I, I mean, it seems interesting to me, but it wasn't a hard, a hard enough feeling that I was like, okay, I have to do it. So what I'm saying here, my point is that I also went through the process of continuing one path, but then there's also like some shiny objects that you, some shiny fields per se, that you see along the journey and that you say, huh, I wonder if I should do that. Or I wonder if I should do that. That seems to be what's happening here based on the information that I have here. And then you mentioned, not only does it look like a difficult major, but you're saying that it also has fewer job opportunities and job growth, especially for international students. That is true based on, I made a video a couple of, a couple of weeks ago on computer science and mechanical engineering and how computer science was basically projected to grow three times as fast as mechanical engineering based on the Bureau of Labor, based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers. Mechanical engineering was at 7%, computer science was at 22%. So there's two things that I'm going to mention here based on what you're saying. So when it comes to international students, number one, I went to school with an international student. And I've heard also from other international students who contact me and say it's hard to get a job. What do they do? What I've seen, what my friend did, he actually stayed a little longer in grad school. I'm not telling you go to grad school, but he went to grad school in the United States and that gave him a little extra time to number one, get a project that was funded by private industry. And that project actually gave him a little bit more time to find a job. And once he was done with a project and working for the university, getting his school paid for, then he was able to find a sponsor that would process his visa and all the paperwork that would allow him to stay in the United States. So that's one way that I've seen international students stay. So the next thing I want to mention here is that to me, you're asking for a my perspective here to me it seems like mechanical engineering is just a shiny object that is on the path of your computer science degree so what i would do is i would keep going with computer science if you are just starting just keep going keep exposing yourself to computer science keep going down your path and don't get distracted by all the other things that can be in your journey to your computer science degree. If you keep going down your computer science path and you realize you watch my video comparing CS and ME and you watch it and you're like, huh, okay. So you continue with computer science and then later down the road, you realize, hey, computer science is really not for me. I hate this. It's just bad. Then 
you already have a backup. Mechanical engineering may be something that you could pursue if computer science doesn't work out. Of course, assuming you're in the beginning stages of your engineering journey. So I hope this helps my friend. Uh, I know that it's, you're trying to make the right decision. You're trying to get it right. And I'm just telling you what I think here, take it as another perspective and uh, I hope it helps. Okay, so the next question we have is from Hanix. That's a cool, not a cool name. It says, hi, is software developer an R&D job? Research and development, for those of you who are not familiar with R&D. It says, I am currently in university studying embedded software engineering. I wish to get an R&D job which focuses on microcontrollers and microprocessors, developing new technologies. But I am not sure what R&D jobs are there for this subject. I only found jobs at ARM and Silicon Labs, microprocessor and microcontroller manufacturing companies where it's possible to have a research job, but it seemed hard to get with a bachelor diploma only. One of them has master diploma plus three years of experience. I'm not sure how to get into developing new technologies at a company, being an embedded software engineer. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I wanna mention here. And the first one, when I was much younger, I used to think that the job that I had to get or that I wanted had to match my major. For example, me graduating as a mechanical engineer, I had to get a job that is called mechanical engineer or otherwise I will be wasting my talent because I wouldn't be using my degree and I wouldn't be using my education, my knowledge. Later on, I realized that, hey, as a mechanical engineer, you can do many things. And so the name, the job title almost becomes irrelevant because you can be called a general engineer and be doing research and development. You can be doing a project manager ma management stuff. And so, for example, my title a couple of years ago my, was research and development support. That was literally my title, but I was doing project management. I was doing engineering work, electrical engineering. And so that just goes to show that don't be misled by the title and don't be limited also by the title that you're searching. Because if you want to be an embedded software engineer at a company developing new technologies, maybe widen and broaden the scope of the jobs that you are searching. I wouldn't just look for embedded software engineer positions because those are, those are going to be very targeted. And it's a very, very specific job that most likely companies, as it seems here, based on what you're telling me, if a company is looking for an embedded software engineer, most likely they're looking for somebody that already has experience and expertise in such field. And so the chances that you have with an entry level or with a bachelor's diploma, it's going to be a little harder to get. So here's what I would do. Number one, broaden the scope of the jobs that you are searching and pair it up with this next thing that I'm gonna mention. Think long-term. I would look at the companies that are developing the technologies that you're talking about. You're talking about microprocessors and controlling manufacturing companies. So if you want to get into that field, what I would do is I will pull the companies that are that manufacture or design such components. And I would try to get in those companies, whether it is as a embedded software engineer or something else, just try to get your foot in the door in those companies. And then once you're there, then you can start transitioning and looking for positions that are more related to your dream job, to what you really want. Because sometimes you cannot get just to your dream job directly. And if that's the case, if you're having a hard time just landing the job that you always wanted, then at least try to get in the company or the industry where you're trying to get into. And then once you get more experience and once you are, once companies have more interest in you because of your experience, and also, once you in the company, potentially where you will be getting that position later down the road, people already know you, you already have a network. So the chances of you getting that dream job that you've always wanted are going to be much higher than if you're just graduating a school and you're trying to land this the one thing that you've always wanted. So I'm not telling you, I'm not discouraging you to just go for the one thing that you want right out of college. But if it's a little harder for you, number one, then broaden the scope of the position that you're looking for, go into that industry first, go into the company, and then walk your way once you're familiar with the industry and what the industry does what the companies do who is doing what then i would at that point start trying to narrow and work my way to that position that you really want i hope that makes sense and i hope that helps my friend let me know in the future how it works out for you because hey 
you seem very very uh driven and it seems like it seems like you really won that position so so good for you okay so the next question that i have here is from eddie hey alex i have a question i'm about to graduate in may and i've been applying to new grad jobs my gpa isn't high 2.7 currently and it'll be about 2.8 after i graduate and i know in the long run the GPA doesn't matter, but how do I get to overcome the GPA question during an interview? I have a human resources interview tomorrow and they asked me to send in my transcripts and I'm worried that tomorrow's and my future employers will knock me out for it. I've applied for jobs that doesn't require a transcript submission to no availability and all the ones that require transcripts I haven't heard back from. So you think that your GPA is ruling you out. And then you com- and he continues says, to give you to give you a little backstory. I'm in my 30s with a wife and a daughter. I wasn't the best online student, and quite frankly, all the cheaters boosted the curve. But being a father during the pandemic really took a toll on my ability to learn and study. I'm not incompetent. Yes, clearly you're not incompetent, my friend. You have a lot to deal with in your plate, and it's just a lot of responsibilities to handle. And it's really difficult to juggle one of those and seems that you can prioritize you Peter you putting your family first of course and so you may have put other responsibilities aside and I completely understand that and it says I've had experiences in project management and mechanical engineering with a NASA program hey amazing I'm currently the project project or program manager and vehicle dynamics engineer for our school's formula SAE team wow and a part of a research and test team that's been funded by NASA I've got myself involved with as much as I could during my schooling, even during the pandemic, but it doesn't seem to help at all. Any advice would be appreciated. Okay, so a lot of detail here, and I know the situation can be complicated. So basically what we have here is we have an engineering student who is looking for jobs after graduation, but he thinks that he's getting rejected because of his low GPA. However, he does have an interview, so that's already something. One thing that we need to understand, guys, and this is not this is not for you, Eddie. I know that you're just asking me a question here, but one thing that we need to understand is that a lot. Of, it just takes one job. If you apply to 20 jobs and you get one job, that's success. If you apply 50 times to 50 companies, that's and you get one job, that's success. You only want one position, so don't get discouraged and keep applying. That's the point of that. But then the other thing that I want to mention here is you mentioned that you already have an interview and you want to overcome the question of what what happened to your low GPA. So the first thing that I'm going to say here is that you had a lot of responsibilities. So you're engineering a school. You also have, hey, a lot of responsibilities at school and outside of school with NASA projects in school. Now you're the project manager for the vehicle dynamics engineer for your school's formula SAE. That's amazing. That's a lot of responsibility. Uh, And of course, also outside with your home life and your family life. So if it were me, one of the things that happens is if you're getting called for an interview, the people that are calling you for an interview, they already know, generally speaking, that you can do the job because that's all your resume told them. Your resume told them, hey, I have this technical skills. This is my experience. And so, and the company says, okay, hey, this person can do the job. Call them up for an interview. And what that interview really does is kind of like a personality competitive compatibility interaction just they're just trying to see whether or not you could be a great fit for the team you could be a great fit for the company for them whether or not they're going to get along with you because they don't want to work with jerks so my point of that is that they're already interested in you now when it comes to the gpa question what i would do is briefly mention all the responsibilities not all the responsibilities but the what you had going on because your situation is extraordinary there are many engineering students who have that many responsibilities in the school aside from engineering school itself and the classes and the tests and the projects and all that but also there are many engineering students who have a home life and a daughter and a wife and of course they have to make time for that so explain briefly why your gpa took a hit but however don't spend too much time of that only bring it up if they ask you about it the main thing that you want to focus on is on the lesson what did you learn how do you how how did you overcome the challenges of getting a low gpa what i've seen in the past is that a lot of engineering students tend to have a their grades usually take a hit in the beginning of the engineering journey and that's for many reasons maybe they have to work for too long maybe they mismanage their time they're just getting acclimated and they get shocked in engineering school because of so much work and volume so there's many things 
on why your GPA could take a hit, not just because somebody didn't study. Yeah, that's certainly a reason, but there's other, also other ones as well. But the main thing here is to focus on the lesson. Hey, this is what I learned. I know that I made a mistake, but I learned from it. And ever since, I've been much better. I'll be balancing my life a little more. So I wouldn't bring it up, but if they do, that's how I would approach it. Focus on the lesson and move on. So that basically concludes the Q&A for today, guys. Now, if you want to know more about research and development and how to get into research and development as a young engineer, go watch this video right here where I explain how you can get there.